Hey, it's Danish. This is the ESP hack that we will build today for sour betting game. We will use Java and this is part of the Java game hacking course from the guide hacking website. So let's head over to Eclipse and create a Java project. I will call it cube2esp. Delete any Java files that are automatically created. Right click source and create a new package. Create the main class inside the package. Right click the package and click import. Select file system and click next. Select the folder where you have the jar files. You can download them from GitHub and the guide hacking website. The link is in the description. Select both jar files and click finish. The last step is to select each jar file, right click it and go to the build path. Select add to build path. That's all we need for the libraries. Let's create our utility class. There are imports from Java native library. This is the get proc ID function, which will allow us to get the game process ID. We take a snapshot of all running processes and then we use process32 first and process32 next to enumerate the process list and find the game process by its name. The next function is get module base address, which will get the base address of the game AC by enumerating the module list of the game process. And then we have get window handle by process ID. We need to find the game window handle so we can create the cheat overlay and place it on top of the game window. So now let's go to the main class. There are imports we need for the main class. In the main function, we will call get proc ID function to get the game process ID. And then we will open a handle to the game process. We can print the dimensions of the game window rectangle. Let's give this a test. So we will run the code. The game window rectangle information is printed to the console successfully. Let's create the vector classes. The first one is the vector2 class, and then we create the vector3 class. It includes a distance function that calculates the distance between two points or vectors in 3D space. Additionally, it provides a calculate angle function, which will be used for determining the yaw and pitch needed to adjust the camera angles for the aimbot. Before we can create the ESP class, we need a few things from the game memory, such as local player, player list, player count, and the view metrics. The names window can be opened with Shift plus F4 in IDA and right players. The player list contains all players including enemies. The total player count is stored within the player list. If we inspect the player list, it is implemented as a vector-like structure. From the player list, we can copy the data type and view it in the types window. By examining the struct, we find that at offset C, there is a field representing the length, which indicates the number of players in the list. At offset 0, there is a pointer to an array containing pointers to individual players and enemies. The local player is identified as player 1 and it points to the local player object in memory. In the player class, it's important to arrange the fields in the correct order. The position 01 field represents the player's position while the camera 01 field stores the camera angles, including yaw, pitch and roll. Next we have the health and armor fields, which represents the player's current health and armor status. At the bottom, there's the team name field, which helps us determine whether an entity is an ally or an enemy. For the view metrics, we don't require just any view metrics. We specifically need the model view projection metrics. By searching for MVP in the names window, we can locate the model view projection metrics. This metrics is essential for transforming vectors from 3D space into 2D screen space. Once transformed, we can use our world to screen function to render ESP boxes on the screen. And you can find more about this on the guide hacking website. Let's write down all of the offsets. We will use these offsets in our code window. Next, we will create the ESP class. Below are the imports required for the ESP class, along with additional imports as needed. Within the ESP class, we define a class called render item, which includes the following. XY positions represents the on-screen coordinates, two fields. One is the ally field, which helps us avoid the teammates. And in field of view, which indicates visibility, the ESP box width and height. The ESP class itself includes process handle, represents the process being accessed, base address, stores the base address of the game module, pointers to important game objects such as the local player and player list. In the constructor of the ESP class, we obtain the base address of the game XC module. We initialize variables like local player, player list, and player count. At this stage, we are not reading the game memory, we are simply storing the addresses. The actual data will be read later using pointers. Now we will create the overlay class, which is the most important part of our program. The java.awt package is important to give us access to various graphics related classes. The overlay class inherits from JFrame, a swing class that provides the main window for graphical user interface. In the overlay class, we have a list called render items, which stores the items to be drawn on the overlay. The items are represented by the render item class, which we previously defined in the ESP Java file. In the constructor of the overlay class, we set the title of the window to game overlay. The window is made undecorated, meaning it won't have a title bar, close button, or other options. The window is configured to remain on top of other windows, ensuring the overlay is always visible. The background is set to be fully transparent, allowing the overlay to seamlessly display over other windows without obstructing them. 
The program is set to terminate when the overlay window is closed. The windows is made non-focusable, so it won't interfere with user input to other applications. Additionally, we use the setbound function to define position and size of the overlay window so that it aligns with the game window or screen. The update render items method is used to refresh the render items list and call the repaint function. This triggers the overlay to redraw itself with the update items. We have a method to enable or disable the ESP overlay. When toggled, the overlay window is repainted using the repaint method. This ensures that the changes are immediately reflected, allowing us to dynamically show or hide the ESP elements such as the ESP boxes or snap lines. We also have a stop method, which is used to completely stop the overlay. This might involve closing the window and halting any associated processes. The paint method is overridden in the overlay class. The JFrame class provides the base window and the paint method is used to draw on that window. Inside our overridden paint method, we first call super paint from the JFrame class. This ensures the window is properly cleared and ready for custom rendering. After that, we use the graphics object G to draw whatever we want on the overlay. This includes ESP elements like rectangles and slab lines. By overriding the paint method, we gain complete control over what is rendered on the overlay. We enable anti-aliasing to ensure smoother graphics by calling the setRenderHint method. This improves the visual quality of the overlay. Next, we use setComposite function to adjust the window's transparency to 80% because we want to make the overlay semi-transparent. After setting the graphical properties, we check if ESP is enabled. If it is, we call the drawESP method to render the ESP elements. In the drawESP method, we retrieve the width and height of the overlay window. Using these, we calculate the center of the overlay and the bottom of the overlay. For every render item, we first check if it is within the field of view. We determine whether the render item represents an ally or an enemy. If it is an ally, we set the color to green. If it's an enemy, to red. Using the draw line method, we draw a line from the bottom center of the overlay to the inner disposition. This creates the snap line. We calculate the dimensions of the rectangle so that it is centered around the entity's XY coordinates. The rectangle is drawn using the direct method. The getLocalPair function uses the current32 function read versus memory to retrieve the local pair. Initially, this reads a pointer, not the actual player object. Once the pointer is read, it is used to access the full player object. The player object is then stored in the player instance. In the getPlayer by index function, the function retrieves a player by their index. First, it performs a sanity check to ensure the index is valid. If valid, it reads the player list pointer, then uses the index to access the player pointer. Finally, it reads the entire player object into memory. The getPlayerCount method retrieves the number of players in the player list. Next, we have the isValidPlayer function, which checks if the player is alive. The isAlive function uses the team name to check if the entity is an enemy or not. The readNullTerminator string function extracts a null terminator string. In our case, it's the team name. The getMVP matrix function reads the model view projection matrix from the game memory. This is the 4x4 matrix with 16 floating point values. And you have probably seen this on the guide hacking view matrix article. And then we have the wall to screen function, which will help us transform 3D vector into 2D space. Finally, the render items method ties everything together. It retrieves the player count, the local player, and the MVP matrix. It then iterates through all players in the list and calculates the distance between the local player and each enemy. Based on the distance, the method adjusts the size of the ESP box. Enemies that are far will appear with smaller boxes, while closer enemies will have larger boxes. The scale is determined using a base distance of 550 units. A Z offset is applied to adjust the vertical positions of the ESP box since we are not using precise bond positions. This offset depends on the scale allowing the box to be positioned correctly. Lastly, the world to screen function is called. The field of view is set to true by default. Next, we instantiate the ESP class, followed by creating an instance of the overlay class. We then initialize a rectangle object using the game's window dimensions and update the overlay window's bonds accordingly. After setting the overlay window visible, we start a new thread. Inside this thread, we continuously retrieve render items and update the overlay to display them. We can run the code and it should display the ESP boxes and snap lines. The scale of the bonding boxes depends on the distance between the local player and the enemy. We can also use the inbot code from our previous Java game hacking tutorial. We will create a new function run inbot that loops through all players in the player list to find the enemy closest to the local player. Once the closest enemy is identified, we call the aim at vector function. The aim at vector function retrieves the local player's camera address and the local player data. It then calculates the yaw and pitch angles required to aim at the enemy by using the calculate angle function, which is defined in the vector3 class. Finally, the calculator camera angles are written back to the local player's camera, effectively locking the aim onto the enemy. We need to call the run aimbot function from our main function, so running this again, we should be able to see the ESP boxes along with the snap lines, and we should have the aimbot.
In the upcoming Java tutorial, we can try to find the bone matrices and create even more accurate bonding boxes and also draw the enemy skeletons.